So I want to open up with what Boaz said when he came to the field in Megillas Rus, and he saw his workers. He said to them, Hashem imachem, Hashem should be with you. And what did they answer? Does anyone here know what they answered? I don't hear you. Yerbechecha Hashem, Hashem should bless you. Everyone who came here tonight, you should be gebent, you should be blessed with everything that you need before you even need it. Yerbechecha Hashem. So we're in the middle of Sphira. Sphira, the first day of Sphira on Pesach, is Chesed Shebe Chesed. Every day, Chesed, Gevura, Hoi, Netzach, every day, Said, every day has a special Sphira. The first Sphira, the foundation of reaching the 49th day, which is Malchus Shebe Malchus, which is David HaMelech, Mashiach, you cannot accept the Torah from God, the Chassan and Kala, which gets married on Shavuos under the Chuppah, which was Harsinai, you cannot marry the king unless you're royalty. So we, all of us, women and men, have to be on the level of Malchus Shebemalchus when we come to Shavuos. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you go from Chesed Shebechesed, from being kind to becoming Malchus Shebemalchus? What is the essence of a king. So I want to start off with an amazing Rashi. In Pashat Vayera, in Pashat Vayera, we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God destroyed Sidon, Gophus the Melach, it was total destruction, and Hashem decided to save Lot. And everybody thinks that Hashem saved Lot because Lot was Avram Avinu's nephew. But when Avram Avinu davened to Hashem to save Sidon, he asked if there's ten tzaddikim there, and Hashem, and he said no. And therefore he turned around and walked away and understood that his nephew Lot, who decided to go to Sidon, would be destroyed with Sidon. But it's a fascinating passage in Pashat Vayeru, and it says the following. While Hashem was destroying all the cities around Sidon, and Hashem remembered Avraham, and Hashem saved Lot. And the question is, what it should have said, is that God remembered Lot. Not that God remembered Avraham. God remembered Lot. Just like it says God remembered the cries of Klai Yisrael and he went and saved them in Mitzrayim. Here, we, he's saving Lot. He should have said God remembered Lot. So Rashi says something. Don't ever forget what this Rashi says. And Rashi says the following. At my age, you got to lift them or where are the other ones? Mahus chirosoy shal Avraham. What does it mean Hashem remembered Avraham? Hashem remembered Lot. Alot Nisgar. Hashem remembered what Lot did for Avraham. Lot knew that Sarah was the wife of Avraham. And when they went to Mitzrayim, and the Mitzrayim asked, who is this woman? Avraham said, it's my sister to save his own life. And at that point, had Lot told the Mitzrim, it's a lie. It's not his sister. It's his wife. They would have killed Avram on the spot and Lot would have gotten the millions and millions of dollars and all the sheep that Avram had. This was his chance to take everything from Avram. And instead, he was quiet. And he didn't tell the Mitzrayim that Avram Avinu was really the husband. By Yiskar as Avraham, Hashem remembered what Lot did for Avraham. Why did Lot not tell on Avraham? He could have gotten all the money. And the answer is that Lot had a karas hatov, that Avraham pulled him out of Haran, 
that Avraham made him rich, and he had a curse that told that Avraham took him wherever he went. Ladies and gentlemen, Malchus starts with Hakaras Hatov. It starts with appreciation. Because Lot was saved from Lot and his daughter came Moab. From Moab came Rus. From Rus came David Amelech. And from David Amelech came Mashiach. Had Lot been killed, there was no Rus, and there was no Moab. To reach the 49th step, to reach Malchus Shebe Malchus, a person has to have a Karasato. But this is talking about Rus's side. What about Boaz's side? And this is really for the men that are in the room. Behine Boaz. Boaz was the Gadol Hadar, the Tzadik, very wealthy. And he came from Beis Lechem, and he said to his workers, the harvesters, he said the first thing when he met them, Hashem imachem, Hashem should be with you. By Yobrullah, they turned to him and said, Hashem, Hashem should bless you. Guys, is that the first thing you say when you walk into your office to your workers? That God should be with you, or why are you late? Where are my, where's the papers? Where's the bank statements? What's going on? You want vacation again? Is that how we walk into our offices? Do we turn to our workers and say, God should be with you? Do we come into our houses at night? And the first thing when we see our children and our wives, do we tell them, God should be with you? Don't you want to hear the return from your children? Rabbeim, I'm a Rebbe, how many times I've walked into class, take out your notebooks, take out your homework, put away your snack, put away all your gadgets. Wouldn't it be much better if a Rebbe walks into a room, no matter what class he's teaching, or a Shashiva, before he gives a shear, tells his students, Hashem imachem, today God should be with you, and they return to their Rebbe, to their husband, to their wife, to their children. Hashem. Shem should bench you. Boaz had a karas And before he asked his workers for anything, he gave them the biggest thank you that you could give anyone. He said, God should bless you. Boaz understood what it meant to appreciate. So the marriage of two people who their basis was a karas it's the mother and father of Malchus. So if you want to stand before Shvuos on the 49th day and say Malchus Shiva Malchus, everyone in this room, including Rabbi Wallerstein, we need to work on a karasatov and start blessing people. We don't bless people. Start blessing others because when you bless others, we see from Boaz, you get blessed. Point number one, now point number two. What's the second thing that a king must have? So if we look in the beginning of Rus, I had a great story to tell you tonight, but I have to fit this in 20 minutes, so I'm going to skip the story and just say the Dvatairus. Stay tuned for Chazak number two. So there's a whole discussion between Rus and her mother-in-law and the army. First of all, this whole story is fascinating. For all the mother-in-laws that are in the room, it's amazing. If you look at what it says over here, right? Batisena Kaila, Batibchana, they raised their voice and they cried. Batishak, Lachamaisa, and they kissed their mother-in-law. It's already Nisim in a flies. But listen very carefully. This is for everybody, and this is my message. Rus Dafkaba. Rus stuck and Arpa left. What happened that night? They were together. They were both hugging their mother-in-law. They both said, we don't want to go. 
And the mother-in-law said, no, go. And they said, no, we don't want to go. And then the mother-in-law said, go. And Orpah said, okay, give me a kiss and a hug and I'm out of here. And she left. And according to the Medrash that night, she was with a thousand men and a dog. In fact, Goliath was conceived that night who fought David. When David Melech went to fight against Goliath, he came with a slingshot. So Goliath said something very weird. He said, what do you think I am, a dog? What kind of statement was that? Says in Mufarshim, he said, David Amalekh, so you know about my mother? So you're making fun of me that I'm from the dog? The Chazam. Two people in the same place at the same time. One becomes the great grandmother of David Hamelech, and the other one is with a thousand men and has a Goliath. You know what the difference between these two girls were? Rus dafkaba. Rus stuck. Commitment. Oh, that's, a, that's the scariest C word. Especially for guys who are dating. Commitment and consequence. How do you know that Rus was committed? She says the following. Stop telling me to leave. Where you go, I go. Tashalini Olin, where you sleep, I sleep. Amcha Ami, your nation's my nation. Your God is my God, and the only thing that will ever separate us is death. Rus committed. Your nation's my nation. Your God's my God. Where you go, I go. She totally committed. A melech, a melech has to commit to his people. A Jew has to commit to a Kodesh Baruch Rus was totally committed. She became Am Hamalchus. Well, what about Boaz? Was Boaz totally committed? And this is a Musa to me more than anyone else in this room. And there's a lot of people in this room that will understand why. So Rus goes at night and she goes to Boaz and she uncovers his feet and she says, I want you to be my Goel. And now she comes home to report to her mother-in-law. And she tells her mother-in-law everything that happened and that Boaz said, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be Pony Almoni. I'm not sure if it's me. Listen to this. And I apologize to everyone because I have never reached this and I'm working on it very hard. And anyone who is in Tzorche Tzibba needs to listen to this. You need to listen to what Malchus is. You need to listen to who Boaz was. Naomi tells Rus. Batoma, she says, Shavi Biti. Relax. Relax, Rus. Sit down. Until we find out how this is going to end up. Boaz had a name. He will not rest until this is settled today. Commitment to Klai Yisrael. Not, nah, I'll call her back, I'll say, I will see, maybe. He had a name that he will never let something that's bothering someone else go for 24 hours. Don't worry, Russ. You're not going to have to worry till Wallace calls you back in two weeks or sends you an email in four months. Because Boaz is not Wallace Boaz, when someone has pain and someone needs an answer, he will have an answer before the day is over. That is Malchus. Commitment and Akaras Hatov. That is Malchus. Man, you know what commitment to Tefillah means? It means you're on time to davening. Not that you're late and you leave early. You know what commitment to learning is? That when you have a Seder, you're on time for that Seder. Do you know what commitment to a woman is? To a wife? Your life is my life. Your children are my children. Your pain is my pain. Your love is my love. 
And that goes the same thing for the ladies. Your struggle in business is my struggle. Your struggle with your meatos is my struggle. What you go through is my struggle. That's commitment. That's dafkabo. V'davak ishbi ishtai. What a lesson we learned from Megillah Rus. You want malchus in your house? You want royalty? There has to be a curse hatov. And there has to be commitment. This is not the story that I wanted to tell you tonight, but it's a one minute story. A lady came to me today. I haven't seen her in two years. And whatever happens on the day that you speak in my history, in my life, is something that God wants you to talk about. So she walks into my office, she says, do you remember me? I'm like, I'm really sorry, because the worst thing you can do is say no. I'm like, when was the last time you were here? She said, two years, Baruch Hashem. She said, two days, I don't remember, I'd be in trouble. But she said, two years. I'm like, two years, come on. You know how many people I saw in two years? She says, Rabbi Wallstein, I came to you, I had a lot of problems. And while we were talking, you told me that, I told you that when Shabbos comes, I'm always late, and I use 16 out of the 18 minutes. I said, what? You use 16 out of the 18 minutes? You can't use 16 out, that's a guy's thing. <laughs> not a girl's thing. We can, you know, we're not supposed to do that either, but you know, until he gets out of the shower. But you have to be there at seven o'clock at Loka. You can't be there at seven sixteen. You have to be there at seven o'clock. She goes, I know, but since I'm 18 years old, I'm lighting candles, and I just, I just can't. I said, listen to me, you have the problem that you was having. I'm like, you want to get rid of that problem? Like five minutes before this month. That's why I left it. We all know. Big Nisim and Floyd's lady, when you light five minutes before this month. Five minutes before the 18 minutes. So she sits down in front of me, she goes, Rabbi Wallstein, I'm just making the 18 minutes, and then my husband sometimes has to do stuff because I'm very late, but Baruch Hashem, since I left your office two years ago, I light exactly on the time that you're supposed to light. I do not use any of those minutes anymore. I said, and how's life? She said, what I really needed didn't happen yet, but it's definitely a little bit better. I said, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you this, I'm very straight. You're really not doing anything special. Some of the therapists in the room would be very upset about it, but I'm real. I'm like, you were doing something wrong till now. You were lighting 16 minutes in. Now you're lighting on time. Yay, shkoyach, it's beautiful, I'm very proud of you, but you're really not doing anything special. You wanna do something special? Light five minutes before. What? I, I just got too bad. I'm like, light five minutes before. She said, why? I said, I just prepared my shift for tonight for Chazak. You want to know why? Because five minutes before means you're committed. Show Hashem you're committed. 18 minutes is the halacha. Five minutes before means you're committed. I am committed. Your Shabbos is my Shabbos. And I'm going to show you how important your Shabbos is to me. So ladies, tonight, I don't like to just get up here and entertain Whoever can be a makabal on themselves, listen to what I'm telling you. It's from the Gedolim and the Tzaddikim. It's the hardest time to be on time. Chas v'shalom, don't use the 18 minutes. Do not use the 18 minutes. That means, Hashem, I made it, just made it, you know, to your party. Five minutes means that I'm at the door five minutes before Hashem opens the door to let us in for Shabbos. I'm dressed and I'm ready and I'm lighting my candles and Hashem, I am five minutes early to your, to your banquet. That's what Hashem wants in the, in the banquet hall. So if you ladies could be macabre, some of you, one of you, just one of you, can be macabre, five minutes early, five, for sure not the 18 minutes, don't use it, but five minutes before Shabbos, she do him, children, health, Hanasa, you will see, Nisim ben Eflois. Rus was committed. You all have that class. And men, and men, uh, they're not going to get away with it, don't worry. <laughs> Come to Daphne five minutes early. <laughs> my, my grandfather, listen to me, listen to me. My grandfather, Allah Shalom, Hachavah Shmuel, and Hachavah Rabin Yom, and Hachayin, was always from the first ten in the Minyan. And the Gemara says, the Kosh Baruch Hu comes to the shul to meet the first ten. And if Chas V'Shalom, one of those ten who's there every day, is not there, Hashem asks the Malachim, where is he? And the Malachim are like, he's sick, then we have to give him a refusal. 
He was up very late last night because he has to work very hard and we have to get him a better job. It's a huge, crazy school huh? to be from the first 10. Be on time. Show your commitment. And that way we'll come in Mitzvah Shem to Shavuos and we'll stand in front of Hashem and we'll say we went from Chesed to Mamalchus and the wedding will take place. Thank you.